Here we'll look at the substitution rule for definite integrals. So the main difference is the bounds here. So now we have an integral from a to b of f of x, or f of g of x times g prime of x. And this is going to be equal to the integral from g of a to g of b, f of u du. So the main thing here is that we have to change the bounds whenever we substitute. So we'll do some examples to see how to properly do this. Here we have dx over x plus 2 to the fifth. So we'll let u be equal to x plus 2. du would then be equal to dx. So this becomes the integral of the dx becomes du. And on the bottom we have a u to the fifth. As far as the bounds go, well we know this u is equal to x plus 2. So when x is 0, u is 2. And when x is 5, u is 7. So when we integrate this, we would have negative 1 over 4, u to the minus 4th, between 2 and 7, which once we evaluate, negative 1 over 4 times 7 to the negative 4 minus 2 to the negative 4. Another example, here we have two things going on. We have an ln of x and we have an x on the denominator. We could try to let u be equal to 1 over x, however we can see that the derivative of that would be negative 1 over x squared, which we don't see in the problem. So we're going to let u be equal to ln of x which makes du 1 over x dx. So this over x dx becomes du, and the ln is just u. Since u is equal to ln of x, our bounds would be ln of 1, which is 0, and ln of 4. Once we integrate this, we have 1 half u squared, running from 0 to ln of 4. And when we substitute that in, we get 1 half times ln of 4 squared. Another example, the integral from 0 to pi of cosine to the fifth x, sine x. So we're going to let u be equal to cosine, since it's what's raised to the power. That means du is equal to negative sine x dx, or negative du is sine x dx. So the cosine to the fifth becomes u, the sine x dx becomes negative du. Since u is equal to cosine x, cosine of 0 is 1, and cosine of pi is negative 1. So as a reminder, if you flip the limits of integration, it changes the sign of the integral. So we can make this positive to the fifth. So we now have 1 over 6, u to the sixth, going between negative 1 and 1. So this is 1 over 6. 1 to the sixth is 1. Negative 1 to the sixth is 1, which is 0. One more example, the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared x. So this one's a little bit tricky because we do have to use some trig identities. In particular, we're going to say that sine squared of x is 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2x. dx. When we do this, we're going to let u be equal to 2x, so du is equal to x dx, or just, sorry, 2 dx. So, we have a 2 
sorry, we don't have a two. We're gonna divide by two so that dx becomes one half du. So we have this one half out front. We still have the one half inside, and this is now one minus cosine u. du. When x is zero, two times zero is zero. Two times pi is two pi. So this is one over four. The integral of one is x, or in this case u. The integral of cosine is sine. And this should be going between zero and two pi. So we have one over four times two pi minus sine of two pi, which is zero, minus zero, which would just be pi over two.